Hey folks, back to Mike here. Today I'm with my longtime friend George Furons from Oyster Harbor Marine on his 28 regulator. I'm also joined by Captain Rob Lowell from Cape Cod Offshore Charters. Today we're going to be targeting striped bass in an open water setting. We're going to be making long drifts, throwing big plugs, and seeing what we can scratch up. Rob has really been keyed in on uh, this fishery here, and uh, we got George. Uh, a windy day. We almost canceled the trip today, but we're going to scratch it out. As you can probably hear in the background with the wind noise, it's going to be tough. Um, what do you say? Give it a shot? I think we're going to get them. Uh, the wind in these couple spots that we're going to fish really seems to fire up the fish. So if we can get out there, which we're going we're gonna to try, uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good day. There's been some really big fish around, fish to 40 pounds plus. Uh, we see them almost every time we're out there. Whether or not we'll get them is leave that up to find out. Yeah, we're not going to catch fish at the diner. Yeah, we're not going to catch fish at the diner, so we better get out of there and go. So we're fishing a patch of flat bottom adjacent to a boulder patch and it's relatively early season here and for whatever reason the fish cruise in here bait must get penned in in the area it's um, you know a lot of widespread cruising fish so this is a great opportunity to use large topwater plugs especially in wind like we have today um, the whole idea behind a, have, having a large topwater plug is you can create lots of noise lots of commotion in the water these fish are likely looking for big pogies or you know, maybe herring that moved into the uh, area. But just having these l noisy topwater plugs just working on the surface is, is great to call them in. The other great thing with these larger plugs is you can cover a lot of ground. So you can just, with these heavier outfits, you can get long casts or upwind. We're using the wind to help us. These lures catch the wind very well. And, um, yeah, so it's just a great way to draw attention. It's basically a, a giant billboard saying, eat it hoagie. Yeah, so I think we've exceeded that little lull that was called for on the forecast. And we're, right, right. we're going to have a little bit of a uh, run home. So we may as well uh, just stay here and fish more. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> but I lost them. Yeah. Yeah, closing the deal. <laughs> Can't do it. He's a, an aggressive, chunky, smaller, but striper. Right in the cartilage. All right. It's amazing how small of a fish can eat such a big plug. And so we've been keyed in on a pretty small area. Uh, we covered a lot of water earlier, uh, a lot of fishless water but you don't know if you don't go. So we finally found these fish, got them dialed in on top water. Uh, the bluefish, small bass, and quite a few big bass mixed in as well. So I'm gonna hit this drift one more time, maybe two more times before we move on to the next area. And so one thing I wanna point out right now is George on the helm here. So we're gonna come back, make another drift. But we're going really slow. We're not bombing back up, we don't wanna agitate the ecosystem here he's idling up he's going nice and wide around the so, so it serves two purposes one it's respectful to other boats that may or may not be here uh today we're the only crazy ones in the wind but um thank god we're in a regulator yeah huh? <laughs> and uh but it also disturbs the fish all the rpm changes uh, to me i i'm a great believer in lots of rpm changes spooks whether it spooks the bait or the stripers either or um, I think it's very important to be cognizant of just being nice and slow and deliberate with the moves just to keep a nice, you know, stable environment. Keeps everybody dry too today. Yeah, that too. So you'll notice when I got that hit, my hook set was tipped down, pointed towards the water. And you want those fish to dig. If you go up high, you can sort of change the angle and pop the hook. 
this guy hit it real close to the boat so he's in a sort of a funny angle we're drifting down with this wind this heavy wind we're drifting down on it pretty quickly yeah poor guy so we're obviously targeting bigger fish than this with these large plugs but it just goes to show you just because you're using a large plug like this you're not out of the game from action from the smaller guys too it's amazing how aggressive these fish are uh, but this is a real chunky little guy a uh, great fish we're gonna let him go and see if we can't can't work our way up the uh, food chain a little bit targeting bigger fish so we're using this is a mix of big and small fish so we're using big plugs for a couple of reasons one the fish here could be keyed in on pogies or this time of year herring so it's a big bait situation so you have a big bait presentation but also you'll notice behind me I don't know sometimes you can't tell on camera but it's really quite windy sustained 20 knot winds and uh, there's a lot of commotion in the water the larger plugs uh, have much greater visibility and so we have the uh, you know the XL hoagie dog walker here so this is a big bait you know the glow color you know in this overcast type situation there's a great contrast in the water with these guys just swimming across the surface So we have three anglers casting. We're sort of all sort of trying to share the space together. As you, you know, again, it's windy, so we're you know drifting at a fairly fast clip. So you'll notice that it seems like I'm reeling very quickly to um, bring this lure in, but part of this is compensating for the drift um, set down on this lure. So this technique is a medium retrieve. Now you'll notice that my rod tip is pointed toward the water. That's because my plug is very close. Uh, but when I, you'll see in just a sec, when I take a cast, the, at the far end of my cast, my rod tip will be high. And that's because the angle changes over the retrieve of the cast. So far out, my tip is up, and that helps keep a tighter line with the wind so the wind doesn't blow the lure too much. And then as I get closer, the angle gets sharper. So I want to like gradually lower my tip over the trajectory of the retrieve. And meanwhile, I'm keeping that bait with short rod twitches in a medium retrieve plus compensation for the boat drift. So that dog walker is going to be just zipping and zapping, right, zigging and zagging right across the surface. And uh, these fish are scattered. So you just keep posting the numbers, cast after cast after cast. Sort of a little bit like jack-in-the-box fishing. You sort of like get lost in the in the casting drill. Next thing you know, there's an explosion and you're hooked up. You got a big bass on, dude! Woo-hoo-hoo! What, 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 what the heck happened up there? I heard a whole lot of commotion. Oh, we're on with like potentially a 40-pound bass right now. and That's amazing. It's a, it's a nice fish, so I'm going to try to take our time with it. But this is the first big fish that we've been able to hook all day. Been seeing them. Very yeah. frustrating. I but see, here it comes. That's a that's a yeah, forty. I see some color. Fish right there. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Puget pogies. Yeah. So that's we, a hammer. There we go. Woo! Yeah, baby. So you'll note that when I landed the fish, I was very careful to come up with holding the belly of the fish to have the weight of the fish evenly supported in my hands and uh, just very slow. What Rob did is he left a rod's length of line for me so I had room to move and maneuver with the fish. And what an awesome, awesome fish. So to properly release a big tired fish like this, it does take a few, few moments to do the job right. So we got George at the helm. He just has the boat in idle. And Rob is doing a great job at holding the, the fish by its lip. And so now the fish is swimming and so the water is we're pushing the water through the fish's gills, and this helps get a little more oxygen into the fish's bloodstream. This can and, take up to 10 minutes. Yeah, and, th and this can take up to 10 minutes. As Rob just said, 
and uh, but it's the right thing to do. These big fish, you know, interestingly, they don't spawn every year, but when they do, the the amount that they do reproduce is like amazing. And so these big breeders. Um, they're, it's very important to take good care of these fish. Yeah, she's almost ready. And one tell I know, I like to look for when the fish gets ready is when the dorsal fin starts spiking, the um, you know starts raising it, and then the other tell is that you'll notice the fish is clamping down on Rob's thumb. That's the other tell. And then when they start swimming on their own, sometimes they'll just explode right out of your hands, uh, and you uh, that's a good time. You gonna give her a little little help? Yep, the pectoral fins are pushing out. Yeah, it's looking looking good. All right, here she goes. Yes, healthy fish. Yeah.